let me show you a cool Lightroom masking trick with which we can easily target the reflection of the sky in the water. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the RAW files from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video. But first we need to do the basic adjustments. That means I'm going to merge an HDR first. So I'm selecting all three images down below in the film strip, right click on one of them, then go to photo merge and choose HDR. Not going to change anything here with the preview loaded. I'm just hitting the merge button. All right, and here we have our HDR file with which we can now work. So let's open up the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape just to give the image summer base saturation. You can especially see that in the mountain peak, which now has some slightly more intense red tones. I do think we can right away work on the white balance. Overall, I want the shot to be a little bit colder. So I'm going to turn down the temperature. What this will do is it will introduce more blue tones to this image without making that bright mountain peak change its color too dramatically. So effectively we have some nice color contrast with the more intense blues of the sky and the water in the foreground against that mountain peak that gets hit by the last sunlight. Also we can make this effect a little more intense by slightly bringing up the tint, but I really don't want to overdo it. So let's keep it very subtle. Now for the exposure, what I want to do, I'm going to bring up the shadows first because we have some rather dark areas in this image. And I also want to bring up the blacks very slightly to make sure there are no underexposed areas in this image. This is looking much better already. Now I want to add some punch by adding contrast and I'm going to do that by increasing the whites. Looking at this program, you can see we do have a lot of room to play with. We are pretty far away from overexposing anything. So that means I could also bring up the highlights. Let's see what this will do. I think that's looking really, really good. I want this image to be sharp and clear. So I'm going to add a bit of texture for some extra sharpness. And I'm also going to add clarity, which will boost the midtones contrast. And this in turn will just give us a very clear and sharp looking image. Also, I'm going to bring up the vibrance quite a bit because I like my images to be colorful. Wonderful. So there we have it. That's the image after the basic adjustments. We can take a look at before real quick. You can see exposure wise, it's looking much, much better with way more details in the shadows. And we added some contrast by increasing the brightness in the brightest parts of the image. Now let's do a bit of masking to further improve this shot. Let's open up the masking panel. What I want to do is I want to start with something very simple, making the sky look a bit better. I'm going to create a simple sky selection mask. And for this image, there aren't really any issues. Lightroom can easily detect the sky as you can see. Now, what I want to do is I want to make the bottom part of the sky brighter than the top. Therefore, I am going to subtract a linear gradient and with that linear gradient, I'm taking out the bottom part of the sky like this. Only pretty much the upper half is selected. So in here, what I'm going to do is to bring down the highlights. And just like that, we can add some really nice effect to the sky. I do think we need to subtract a little more here. So this effect isn't that obvious. I want to make that subtracting linear gradient very, very soft. In fact, I do want to make the very top part of the sky even darker. So I'm going to use another linear gradient and I'm just targeting the very top like this. And in here, I'm, all I'm going to do is to bring down the blacks. Uh, let's drop them quite heavily. You can see making in this part darker by dropping the blacks will introduce a very weird looking blue color tone. We don't really want to have that in this image. So I'm going to counter that by bringing down the saturation. And that's about it. Now the top part of the sky looks good, but what about the reflection in the water? How can we target this area? Of course, we cannot use a select sky mask since this is obviously only selecting the top part of the image, not the bottom part. We could try using a color range mask on that blue area, but as you can see, it's not really that precise and we are selecting way more than needed. So how can we actually select the sky in the reflection. There's a really, really cool trick to do that. For that, we want to flip the image. So up here in the menu, go to photo, 
and here choose flip vertical. And I guess you already know where this is leading to. What we are going to do now is we are going to create a new mask and we are simply choosing select sky. Since we have flipped the image, Lightroom does count the reflection as the sky itself. So the sky selection mask will create a pretty good selection for that. Now all we need to do is to go back into the photo menu and once more hit flip vertical. And just like that, we have created this very nice selection for the sky reflecting in the water. What I want to do in here is I want to add a little more punch. So I'm going to bring up the contrast. I'm also going to increase the highlights. I do know the reflection is almost as bright as the sky at the top of the image and this makes it a little more unnatural but however I really like it this way so if you prefer it otherwise just don't bring up the highlights as much as I do. What I also want to do is to add clarity which will add some really nice texture to the reflection. Let's bring it up like that and I also want to bring up the temperature. This will just add a little more warmth to the sky reflecting in the water. All right, this is looking really good. I can turn off this mask real quick to see the difference from before, with a very, very dark reflection, to after. Looking much better and way more interesting. Now there's just one more thing I want to do and that is to target the top of the mountain in the back. Therefore, I'm going to use an object selection mask. And as always, we wanna make sure to activate the rectangle select mode right here. With that mode active, I'm just going to draw a rectangle around that mountain in the back. You can see Lightroom is creating a very good selection here, but I still want to modify it a little further. So I'm going to say subtract and I'm choosing a linear gradient to take out the bottom part of this mountain. I only really want to target the very top right here, which I want to make more intense and I also want to give it a more intense color. That means I'm going to bring up the whites in here just emphasizing the sunlight hitting that mountain peak a little more by doing it this way. I'm also going to bring up the highlights a notch and then I'm going to bring up the temperature introducing more warmth to the top of the mountain. Wonderful, and that's it for the masking already. So let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. Looking much better. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. And we are going to start this in the color mixer. Let's go into, into the hue tab because I want the mountain peak to become a little more red. And we are going to do this by bringing down the orange hue. That's looking perfect. Then we can also head into the saturation tab, making that mountain peak a little more intense by bringing up the orange tones. And I want to bring down the blue saturation a little bit. Okay, then let's do some split toning in the color grading tab. I actually want to start with the midtones because that mountain peak right here mostly consists of midtones, which I now want to improve. I want to make them even warmer. So let's set up the hue, looking for something in the red range right around here. And now I'm carefully pushing the saturation up to add this album glow effect. This is looking great. Of course, we want to keep the color balance. So I'm also going to introduce some more cold tones using the shadows here. Let's bring up the hue to a blue color tone and let's slightly bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now, one thing I'm still not sure about are the highlights of the image. Looking at Instagram, you can see we still have a lot of room to play with. What I can do is to go into the highlights of the split toning settings and we can use that luminance slider down below. This will affect the luminance of the highlights. So I'm going to bring it up to stretch the histogram a little further into the bright side. This is a pretty good choice right here. I can deactivate the split toning for a moment to see the difference from before to after. This just gives us some more brilliance and punch. Now we're almost done already. I do want to head into the calibration tab real quick and do the thing I do for most of my images. Bring down the blue primary hue. This especially will make the mountain peak a little more intense with that very nice looking red color tone, but it will also turn the blue tones into a more cyan color tone. Then let's erase the saturation because we want this image to be colorful. And that's about it for the color grading. The only thing left to do, the sharpening. 
and we're going to shop in the details tab I am always using the same settings for radius and details in here because I read this comment a lot. This just gives me the best sharpening results. I'm going to drop the radius. Radius is nothing more than the radius around edges that will get sharpened. So in this case, 0.5 pixels around edges will be sharpened. Then I'm going to bring up the details, which increases the amount of sharpening around edges. And then I'm going to add a masking while holding down the Alt key so we can nicely target the areas which we want to sharpen. Because we don't need sharpening in the sky, for example. So we can nicely mask it out, just like this. And then I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening right around here. Wonderful. All right, and that's it for the Lightroom part. Now we still need to clean up this image. I'm going to do that in Photoshop. So right click on the image. Go to edit in and choose Photoshop. And as always, I'm going to duplicate that layer first by hitting Ctrl J. Then let's zoom in. There are a ton of sensor spots in the sky, which I'm going to remove using the spot healing brush. I'm just going to paint over each of these dots. All right, then there are also a lot of things going on in the foreground, which I want to remove like all these signs. All right, and there we have it. This is the finished image, and I hope the little Lightroom masking trick was something that was new to you. If you know anything similar to this, let me know in the comments because I love to learn new things like this. And thank you so much for watching this video.